Hey guys! BitBit Jump is a programming language that exists on SOLangs.org and does not have any attribution on it at all. And, to make matters worse, the article was posted by an anonymous IP address. Hooray! Um, actually, th this isn't a mystery at all. It was made by Oleg Mazanka. Here he is claiming it on his website. Oh well, mystery solved. And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you giant meddling green reptile monster. BitBitJump Jump is a one instruction set computer, meaning that every program written in it is, at its core, just a single instruction repeated over and over and over again, used in different ways. Another example of a one instruction set computer is Sublec, which I have already done a video about here. The instruction for BitBitJump Jump is as follows. There are three arguments, A, B, and C, and they're all integers. For example, we'll use this toy program here, and we can also write it as a string of bits. In bit bit jump, the instruction copies the bit in position A to the bit in position B, and then execution jumps to the bit in position C. So in this example, bit 19, which is this one, is copied to bit 20, which is this one. So now the code looks like this. And now the instruction pointer jumps to bit 24, which is the next line. The next line copies bit 0 to bit 0, which does NOTHING! And then the program jumps to address negative 1, which is how BitBitJump ends programs. Of course, writing all your programs like this would be very tedious and annoying, so BitBitJump provides some assembly instructions to make programming in it a bit easier. <clears throat> if you wanted to make it easier, why would you use BitBitJump? The whole point is for it to be obfuscated! Well, I don't know. It makes it easier to show its turn complete. Anyway, you can declare a label in BitBitJump with the label name followed by a colon. So this declares that X is pointing to the memory cell containing 15. You can then use X in other BitBitJump instructions to refer to this cell. Um, why is there a 00, zero after the 15? What's that for? Oh that, it's so that the line is still technically a valid BitBitJump instruction, even though those cells aren't actually used for anything. Additionally, you can use x apostrophe 4 2.2, specifically the bit in position 4 of x, which in this case would be a 0. So if you do the following bit bit jump code, we copy the bit at position 4 in x to the bit in position 3 in x. So x goes from 15 to 7, and then we jump to 24. So for jumping, if we want to have an instruction just copy something and then just go to the next line, we need to count where it is? No, the question mark label always refers to the next memory cell. So this will just go to the next instruction unconditionally. And also, if the C operand is absent, it's implied to just be a question mark. So the unconditional copy can also just be written like this with two arguments. Now, of course, you may want to use some sets of instructions more than once, such as, for example, defining a copy instruction that you can use over and over again. Luckily, BitBitJump assembly supports defining macros. Macros start like this and end like this. So a macro that copies 8 bits from A to B looks like this. And now we have an easy copy instruction that can be used anywhere in the code. Finally, you can do input by copying from index negative 1 and do output by copying to index negative 1. So this program here declares A to be the ASCII code for A, B to be the ASCII code for B, and then prints ABBA. We finally have printing text. Hooray. Don't go away, senor emotion. Lay all your love on me. And also, Oleg Mazanka was kind enough to include a set of predefined macros that you can import, and as a result, programming in BitBit Jump isn't actually that much more difficult than using anything else. But, 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 but doesn't that defeat the whole point? Well, would you prefer to look at what this assembles to? <coughs> oh my god, it's beautiful! I think I'm gonna cry! Yeah, go do that somewhere else. So now that we have macros, let's write a truth machine program. The truth machine, which I've probably described a billion times by this point, is a program that takes an in input from the user. If it's 0, output 0. If it's a 1, output 1 in an infinite loop. The program starts by taking an input and storing it into the value x. 
It then subtracts x from the ASCII code for 0, which is defined below to be 48, and stores it back into x. Then we do an if jump, where if x is 0, we jump to is 0. Otherwise, we jump to the loop. At is 0, we output a 0 and a new line, and the program ends. At loop, meanwhile, we output 1, again defined below as an ASCII character, and then jump back up to loop. There will be no escape. And that's a truth machine. Well, okay. But at least with sublec, you were using the sublec instruction. This is just macros. What would this 17-line program look like without macros, anyway? Oh crap, it's over 3,000 lines. Anyway, now here's a program that prints the lyrics to the song 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall. First up, printing a number. Here's a macro called print number that prints a two-digit number. It first divides the number by 10, and stores the quotient into a memory cell marked 10s, and the remainder in a memory cell marked 1s. We then add 48 to the 10s and 1s to get the proper ASCII characters, and then print them out. Simple enough. And also, I made the print number macro before realizing it was already in the macro library for default, so it's worthless! Yeah! The other part of the 99 bottles of beer program is printing text. Each line of text has its own macro to print it, so let's just look at one of them. Here we have a pointer that begins pointing at the text. We dereference the pointer into an output variable so we can get whatever is stored there. And then we print out the value. Then, we check if the pointer is at the negative one cell in the string. If it is, we jump to the end, otherwise we increment the pointer by one machine word and loop. At the end, we move the pointer and output back to where it started, so that when the macro is called again, these are back at their default values. If we don't do this, it will do undefined behavior. And now the actual logic of the 99 bottles of beer part is pretty straightforward. It's just print number, print text, decrement number, loop until zero. And here it is. Printing it very, very slowly. Though, it's not the slowest thing I've seen. But anyway, if you want to try out Pit Pit Jump yourself, there's a link to it in the description. Thanks to Tyler Zanke and iHashibami for supporting the channel, and I'll see you next time! Also, I'm not one to usually beg for subscribers, but I've been at almost 20k for months now. Hit that subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. This should be making the subscribe button on the website, like, glow or something. Hit the subscribe button, subscribe!